Welcome to the Quick Coding Bytes. Today, we'll be taking a look at another topic that is in the American Computer Science League contest, data structures. Data structures are a fundamental part of computer science. Data structures are used in virtually every field in computer science and is a fundamental topic that all computer science students learn. At the base level, data structures are blocks that hold data in a particular manner. Each type of data structure has its specific way that the data flows through it, and those properties are what programmers use to their advantage when writing their algorithms. We'll be taking a look at two different types of data structures today, stacks and queues. These are the data structures that are most likely to show up on ACSL contests. I will be making a separate video for the last data structure that comes up on ACSL contests trees. So this video will only focus on stacks and queues. Let's start by taking a look at the intuition of stacks. Think of a stack as a box. When you fill up a box, you start by putting the things at the bottom. So you start with putting things right around here. And then as you start putting more things, they kind of stack up on top of each other. So you start filling the box. Now, let's say you move the box to another place and now you're removing items from the box. Well, in what order would you remove these items? Well, you would remove this item first, then you would remove this item, then you remove this item, then this, and then this. So, essentially, you remove items in the reverse order that you put the items in. The way you think about this is that you take the item that you put in the box last out first and the, the item that you put in the box first out last. In other words, you're doing something or this box represents a LIFO data structure where last in is first out. So in the data structure, if you think of it as a box, you would put an item into the data structure, which would go essentially at the bottom of the box. And then you would put more items on it, inside it. And every time you remove from the box, you remove the item that you last put in. So we'll look at an example like this, but just the intuition is that you, you are putting items or you're putting, for example, letters in a box. And every time you remove from the box, you take the topmost or the newest letter that you put into the box out. Formally, a stack has two commands that are available, a push and a pop. A push represents something being put into a box and a pop represents something being removed from a box. So if this is our data structure, then a push would be just putting the item all the way down. Think of it like connect four where the, the, the token would go all the way down at the bottom. And the pop would remove from the top. So those are the two commands that you have to be familiar with um, on the ACSL contests. Now let's take a look at an ACSL problem and see how data structures are going to be used. So the question asks, given an initial empty stack, what is the next item to be popped after the following operations have been performed? So. Let's go through all these operations and determine the final answer. So you see, you first push F, so I'm gonna write F down right here. Then you push O, then you push R. Remember, so this is the inside or the most innermost part of the box, and this is the outermost part of the box. So if I were to pop, I'm gonna start popping from here first. I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna pop X. So um, in ACSL, when you do pop, X just means there's you, there's no value that you're popping, right? You're just removing. So uh, it's not a letter that you're popping. So you just remove R. I'm pushing a T. I'm pushing I. I'm pushing X. Oh, I'm popping X. So this gets removed. I'm pushing E. I'm pushing T, popping again, so T gets removed. Um, then I'm pushing H, 
pushing A, pushing N, popping, so remove this, pushing N again, popping X, pop again, so this time A, push I, push V, push E, so I'm just going to kind of move, get myself some more space here. Okay, um, I'm pushing E, pushing R, popping, so remove this, pop again, remove that, push S, pop, pop, pop two times, so remove this, remove this, push A, push R, push Y, Okay, I'm just gonna move back a little further. Um, pop X again. So let's remove this Y, pop X again, remove R, pop again, pop again, pop again. So pop again, that's one, that's two, that's three. So what's the last number? Oh, excuse me, it's this one. So what's the last number that's, or last letter that's left? And so what would be the next one that's popped? The answer for that is E. So how I solved this problem was I went through, wrote each letter down, basically creating this stack. And every time um, something was popped, I, used, I just put an X or a slash through it. So that's how you would use data structures in an ACSL problem, specifically in a stack. Now, let's take a look at a queue. A queue is like a line at a grocery store. The first person who enters a line is the first person who gets served. So if I am this person right over here, the last person in this line, then I have to wait until the first person in the line gets checked out, the second person in line gets checked out, and then it's my turn. But for this lady right here, if she was the first person in line, she would be the first person to get served. So, in other words, it is like a first in, first out, or a FIFO data structure. In other words, the first data object that is entered into a queue, the first data object that is entered into a queue, is the first one that relieves the queue. And the last data structure, or data object that enters a queue, is the last one that gets removed. This visual can further explain it, where if this is my queue and one is the first element that is added to the queue, then it's the first element that will leave. And if five is the last element that is added to the queue, it is the last element to leave the queue. So in ACSL, the commands push and pop are also used in queues, with the push representing the insertion into a queue and a pop representing the removal from the front. In programming, a push into a queue is also known as enqueuing something, and a pop in a queue or pop from a queue is known as dequeuing something. So those are kind of the wording that we'll use. And next, we'll take a look at an example problem. So the problem reads, given an initial empty queue and the following sequence of operations, what would be the next popped element? So we know it's a queue, so it's a FIFO data structure, first in, first out. So let's start. Push O, so I'm gonna write O. Push C, I'm gonna write C. Push E, so I'm gonna write E. And now comes pop X. So with the pop X, we know that since it's a FIFO, the first thing that came in is the first thing that'll get removed. So if you write it like this, the way I do, where you go from top and you write from the bottom, in the stack, we started removing things from the bottom. But in the queue, we're going to remove things from the top. We're going to push A again. We're going to push N. We're going to pop again. So C was removed. We're going to pop again. So E is removed. Push S. Push T. Pop. So A. Push A. Push T. Push E pop and then pop, so pop, 
pop, so there's only one that's left, or the next element that would be popped is T, because it's the next one in line. It's the head or the front of the queue. So hopefully the core concepts of stacks and queues make sense now. Most ACSL concepts on data structure become extremely easy to solve as long as you understand how the data structures work, where a stack is a LIFO data structure and a queue is a FIFO data structure. So remembering those two concepts are paramount to solving any of these problems. As you can see, once you know what type of data structure it is and you understand the concept behind it, then actually doing the work for it is just a matter of time because it's very straightforward and there's not a lot of complexity involved.